Hi traders, welcome to Profiling the Profit, the week ahead in futures. It is January 7th, 2017 on a Saturday. I hope everybody had a great uh, start to the new year. Uh, we've turned the corner of the first week of trading and uh, so far we haven't seen anything different. Low volume, uh, a little bit of floating by a couple of the indices. They're a little, little broken right now and I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. Um, we had the only news last week was the unemployment news and that turned to be a non-event but we had some really good trades last week. We want to take a look at that. Um, well, we actually had really one good solid trade, um, but uh, and we had one that just missed. We'll look at that as well. But uh, as we progress into January, we we think uh, volumes are going to pick big time up. Now, obviously, this first week is tough because we think traders are coming back in, and uh, you know once the big traders are back in the banks, the institutions, and stuff, then that's where we'll start to. Um, see the volumes pick up. So let's get over to the economic calendar quickly. We don't have much going overseas. We have just a GDP number um, and uh, also um, uh, the um, I think Mario Draghi is, is talking next week as well, but it's nothing significant. This week in the U.S., we really don't have a lot going on. We have a bunch of speakers. Harker speaks twice. Charlie Evans speaks once. Dennis Lockhart and, of course, Janet Yellen. I don't expect any of this to be any market movers. Um, Janet speaks in front of some educators. I don't think she's going to be talking economic policy during that meeting. Um, or that, that speech. The rest of the time, we have the EIA for petroleum. If you guys are crude traders out there, which we are, um, and that was one of our great trades this week. Um, and we have PPI on uh, Friday. Other than that, not a ton. Um, so we're hoping the uh, traders come back in and we can get some volume into this marketplace. All right, let's look at the charts here in the NASDAQ. All right, so what happened in the NASDAQ? We had a short zone. We, this is the only indice that we won the short. And we had a, a, what we thought was a good zone. It opened up into the zone in the early part of Monday and sold off. We got short in here. Some people took some, tra or took some profit off of here. I was holding for a low down here, uh, 48.50. Uh, to be my first target. Uh, this thing rolled right back up, found support, rolled back up. We jumped out of the position, broke even for me. Actually, I think I made like uh, two or three ticks on it. It wasn't anything to write home about. Some of you guys made a couple dollars on it. Great. If you took a loss on this, eh, you probably shouldn't have. We've been talking about it in the room. Um, and then we kept going up and we took out the highs up here. Okay. And we saw that only on two indices. We saw that on the ES and we saw that on the NASDAQ. The only two indices that took out their highs. We'll look at the uh, Russell and we'll look at the um, uh, the uh, Dow here in a minute. Um, but what was the cause of this? Well, I mean the FANG stocks on the NASDAQ, it's hard to say on the uh, S&P, but the NASDAQ, the FANG stocks were all breaking out the new new uh, well they not all new highs but the the fang stocks were breaking out and they did uh, uh, do it on volume so that definitely lifted the nasdaq up so we think that the nasdaq still has a ways to go up here uh, or the potential to go up there the path of least resistance is still to the upside we thought there may be a poke trade and we'll talk about the poke trade in a minute but it's not there so we want to be long the nasdaq any pullback we have a zone down here uh, 49.64 down in that 49.35. Pretty big zone, but we think that needs to hold. If that holds, we get uh, we could have a chance at more upside here, um, and it could just grind into to new highs uh, into the inauguration or until uh, the institutions come back and decide they don't want to take this up any further. All right, so the Nasdaq's a good opportunity if we can get a little bit of a pullback. The ES. Uh, same as the NASDAQ we spoke of. We don't see the area um, to get long into this. We, we, there is a nice area here, but it's a very wide area. And not only that, we close close to that area. Those, that's not ideal for us. And again, in, th in this video, what we're trying to do is point out high probability, low risk areas for you, for you to, to look at and to consider uh, for yourselves. Um, and right now we just don't see it in here. The, the, the zone is going to be way too big on the ES, so we're going to avoid that for now. Let's go take a look at the YM. The YM, as we said, went sideways. Even though it did go up, it tried to follow uh, the ES and the NASDAQ. It didn't take out its highs. Of course, everybody's talking about the, the Dow 20,000 again. Just make 
just make sure you understand one thing. The, when they talk about the Dow 20,000, they're actually talking about the Dow, the cash market. It's not the Dow, the YM. This is the, this is the mini Dow. Even though the, the high up here is 19,933, but I can tell you right now, the, the Dow cash is much closer to 20,000 than, than uh, the, 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 the Dow mini. So, but we're not going to worry about that. We need to focus on the trade, the, the, let the pundits talk about these, these levels up here. And right now, um, we're getting close for this to poke up as well. I suspect they will poke up. And yes, I suspect they will try to go to 20,000. But that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to find good opportunities with low risk and defined risk. We don't see the defined risk here. Just like the uh, ES, the zone would be way too big and uh, just doesn't set up for us very well. So we'll pass on that and watch it. Uh, the Russell. Now, this is interesting, guys. This could be uh, a hat tip for us here on the Russell. We have this nice move up on the Russell, of course. And then we go sideways. We go one, two, three, four days sideways. Um, almost exactly four, four days of uh, insiders, as we call them. These are inside days. Not technically true, but almost true. Um, actually, last week we went down, tested the low, went back and took out the high by a few few ticks, and then rolled it back in and finished actually in the lower part of the, the uh, weekly range. Now, while that's while the other four industries were indices were trying to take out their highs or took out their highs. That's interesting. So who's right, the the Russell or the uh, the Nasdaq? Right now the Russell's been leading, but that's not that's not for us to say. Okay, well, well the Russell's rolling over. This thing's dead in the water. Now right now we definitely have some cleaning up to do up here at this 1392. This is not what I call a topping pattern. I think there's more upside to it. We do have a nice zone down here. I'm looking for the poke trade. All right, I'm going to explain what the poke trade is. All right, it's one of my favorite trades um, using the profile. So the poke trade is is we 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 open up inside the range of the weekly. Now understand that these weekly these profiles are weekly profiles and two hour candles. You can take the same concept and move it down into a daily profile or a monthly profile, whatever you want. But it, we like using two two hour or two week profiles, or excuse me, one week profile, two hour candles. I'll be all right. Um, but what we like to see is an open back up into this range on Monday, poke down below the range, and then return back into the range, roll back up to the upside and take out and keep going. Now that's called a, a poke squeeze. It pokes down into the area, comes back in, and then the latecomers and the breakout traders all get caught, and they have to they have to get out of their position. Those are usually short termers, they're what we call pikers. All right, usually the guys who gamble, and then they get out of their trades, running for the hills, and that gives the, this baby some steam to go to the upside. And of course, we like to see and look for day two follow through, day three. Uh, extension and then we can decide what we want to do after that so in this case we want to look for the poke we want to see the poke down the zone the long zone is the 1350 down into the 1341 um, my uh, what we will do is we will look for a poke down here and a trigger okay back up into the zone you can come down and wait for it to poke and then get back into the the uh, previous weeks uh, range okay However you use your trigger, that is it. But we like this zone down here. Again, 13, I think I said 1350, is that right? Uh, yep, 1350 down into that 1340 area. We will see if what we can do here. We really like that opportunity. All right, moving away from the indices, let's go over to crude. Crude is where it was all at for us last week. We ad identified a nice zone above the market. We were looking for the poke, and this is exactly what the poke looks like um, if you do not know what it is. Price actually opened above the previous week's range, which is the same that still qualifies as a poke. It goes up and then it returns back in the range. Actually, our trigger happened into this 7478, so we are just still in into the thing. We had a nice trigger in here and we caught two straight dollars in here. Actually, we were looking for a third dollar but price came down, hit this this low channel right here, this low resistance area that we had drawn out when price busted back up above this. And uh, it rolled back up. And actually, which is interesting, crude actually popped back up to the upper upper third 
of the range for last week. That's pretty bullish in here. Now we have to wait and see uh, if uh, crude can get back up above 55 and start heading up. It's got a number up here at that 57 area. And of course, everybody's talking about the 60 area, which is a real possibility, we believe. I don't have a zone right now to the long side. Last week's trade was a beautiful trade. Uh, two dollars. If you were trade, if you traded it better than we did, you probably got uh, close to three dollars. So congratulations. But we are stopped out on our last uh, third of the trade. Uh, but nonetheless, we did capture. It's a great way to start the the year. A uh, great way to start the week as well. So right now, I'm gonna take that zone off there. We don't have anything there, and we'll sit on the sidelines and see what happens. Maybe we could get a couple more weeks of sideways here, set us up another zone, and get long in this thing. All righty, Goldie broke our hearts last week. Uh, man, that was a tough one for us. Uh, gold, we identified this nice uh, band down here, a, a long zone, which we really liked. It was a fairly big zone, 1146 down into the 1139. We said, you know what? If we can get down in that area, we want to be long. We think Goldie has a little bounce coming, especially after we, we found a little bit of a bottoming here. Uh, it did. It came down and touched our zone almost to the tick. That's heartbreaking, of course, and you want to chase this thing, and you want to get on the board and, and ride this horse, but chasing's not in our rules, and I, I, I know I've said this before in past videos. If you chase, it's like dogs who chase cars, okay? They don't last for long. Now, please don't send me any notes and say that's mean. I'm, I'm a dog lover. I've got a dog. I've had dogs all my life, but it's the truth. If, if you chase cars and tires, you're going to get run over, and in this case, if you chase trades, you will get run over eventually. Yes, this would have worked and probably very nicely, but this is one that it worked. How about the others that don't? So we don't chase. So now what do we do? First, that zone's gone. Um, we have a zone down here, 1164, down into the 1156 area. Here's a little zone like we like right here. If if gold really wants more upside, which we think it has a little bit more upside before we start to get hungry for the downside, Gold has some work down here. This is not a bottoming pattern for gold, but we think gold has a, a little visit down here before um, before she's totally done to the downside. So we're going to try to play the upside first for a little bit. We think it has a little bit of a bounce still, so we'll look for this zone. If this thing blows through this, we know all bets are off, and it could shake. It could it could chop a little bit more, no doubt about it. Just understand how gold works. Now let's go back and take a look here. We saw this move in gold. We know people obviously were getting long here and thinking, well, it's just a fluke. It was a fake breakout, et cetera, et cetera. It went up, and then, boy, they just buried those guys. And that's sort of what we're looking here. We're looking for that same move. We're looking for this little movement to the upside. We're going to take advantage of it while it's up here. We have an area up here we think it could stop at. Uh, it's a little bit of, uh, well, it's a, well, first we have the, uh, the 1208, and then we have the 1220 area. I'm looking for that zone there if we're able to get long for targets. And then I'm looking for this thing to roll over again. Take out the lows of 1124 and continue to go a little bit lower. Will it happen? I don't know. We'll see. But we have our stuff defined. Looking for the upside. Again, the long zone on this is 1164 down to 1156. Watch for your trigger. Don't be just jumping in here blindly because when gold gets rolling down a hill, it will take you out quickly. So be careful. All right. Back over to the euro. Yeah, Euro's doing nothing, and it's it's really getting, you know, wild. It could be, we could be bottoming down here, uh, no doubt about it. We've had some really weird moves. Typically, when the Euro gets going one direction, it goes pretty hard. Um, we had a move up, and then we had this big swing down. We had a big gap, gap up, and then a big swing down, sort of sideways. We've had, this was a weird choppy. We gapped up, gapped up, gapped up. We gap down, we went straight up, and now it's just sideways. This is really hard to trade. We're right back in the middle of this congestion. I, there's nothing for us to do in here. We'll wait for uh, uh, for uh, the euro to set back up a little bit cleaner. Um, over to bonds. All right, bonds. You know, ha has had a nice bounce, uh, but it's just that it's a bounce. Boy, there's a, a lot of cleaning up to do down here um, at the bottom. So we don't believe uh, bonds are done to the downside. However, we don't see an area to get involved uh, to the upside and our zone to get short is a lot further up the up the board here. So we don't even have it on the board because it would take a good move 
well, it'd take a, a tremendous move in one week to get up to where we think that we could get short. So for right now, we're going to sit on the sidelines and the bonds, um, and we just need to wait for it. Um, oh, of course, now, just understand that if there is a poke, okay, um, then you could use the poke trade here. Uh, however, I, 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 we're not, we're just still going to avoid it for now. Just, I just don't see it in here. So, all right. If you are still long from our zone that we talked about, congratulations. I'm taking the zone away. It's, it's insignificant now at this point. Uh, we do have a low down here. Uh, just like the bonds, it has a little bit of cleaning up to do. Um, I want to pull this out here, and, and just like the bonds, we do have, I didn't mention this in the, when I had the bond chart up, but in the bonds, we do have this this sort of precipice right here that we're dangling off of. Um, I, I tell you, if this rolls back up into the range uh, of this big profile right here, um, you know, it could take, it could go sideways for a while. It's tradable, but it could go sideways because you, you get, look at all this junk in here. Let me draw a line around here um, and show you what I mean. We have all this junk right here. And you see there's low volume uh, right here, low volume node. And, and we have highs up here that went through. Price held a few times in here. Uh, it held right here and then it blew back through it and stuff like that. We got a lot of crazy stuff in bonds right now. It, it de you know, bonds definitely need to hold below 120. Or excuse me, notes need to hold below 128 uh, for there any chance to get down to new lows. How and if they break these lows down here, it could be a free fall. It could. I'm not saying it will be. Or they could poke it down there and take out all those stops from way back here. All these these uh, bond bulls and note bulls back here who are all long. Could get all taken out, and that could fill the uh, fill the orders for all the uh, other institutions who are now wanting to still get long this market. Um, at this point, I'm not sure if why somebody wants to get long this market. I mean, um, I don't see it, um, especially in an interest in an environment where we've had ultra low interest rates. The notes have obviously have a, uh, a hand in that. So um, I think right now, I, I still think the uh, the downside is the path of least resistance. Um, technically, it is. Um, and I think right now where the markets are, it is also that way as well. But we don't really have a zone to get involved in. So what we're doing is we're sort of sitting on the sidelines here. Okay, If we can, we're going to look for the poke trade. Okay, Only on the notes, though. We will take the poke trade. Again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through what the poke trade means. Poke trade would mean this. I'm going to use uh, just the uh, a poke trade would be this. Whoops. Prices either start open up in range and go out, and then come back into range, and then squeeze and crush anybody who got long late on the breakout, which obviously forces a bigger move to the downside. Now, price can also. I'll clean my chart up here. Price can also start outside, gap up, start outside, and then sell off into the previous week's range and continue to the downside. That's the poke trade. We don't have a zone above. If it goes and it keeps going to the upside, we'll, we'll revisit and see if a zone sets up. It may take a couple weeks to see that zone. But uh, right now, we'll look for the poke trade. If we do get in the poke trade, we're looking for the 122.16 to get tested at some point. All right. Last couple of markets here is corn. And we're, corn is not doing anything um, at this point. There's just nothing to do. We're right here banging in between 345 and 363. Really nothing for us to do. It's a day trader's haven right here. Um, again, we're not day traders. We will take some day trades, but they have to be extremely, extremely um, easy and no-brainers. Um, and we don't see some in corn right now. Um, also, whoops. Soybeans the same thing. They're, soybeans are a little weaker than corn. Corn's at the top of its range. Um, soybeans at the bottom of its range. But we just don't see a low-risk trade in here. We're not even sure what direction this thing's going to go. So... Nothing here in soybeans as well. Um, other than that, that's all we got for charts this week. I hope everybody's had a great year. 
Uh, so far, it's been a short year, obviously, with one week, but uh, hopefully everybody has gotten back into it. Um, and if you aren't into it, it's okay. You got a lot of year left. Everybody has to keep their powder dry, take the good solid trades. Um, hopefully over, um, hopefully over the holiday, you had a chance to visit the website, take a, take a, um, a look at all of our free resources. If you have not been over there, I say this every week, it's probably like a broken record. Get on over there. Um, listen guys, this is free education. Um, and everybody says, well, free education is what it's worth. I, I don't think so. We got three guys here that have a lot of trading experience, probably combined over 60 years of trading experience. And with that trading experience comes a lot of little things that you probably don't, uh, you wouldn't pick up unless you sat in front of the screens for many, 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 many hours. Okay. And we'll give you that information, that trade management, trade execution, trade psychology. Those are huge things that you need to work on in your trade. It's not always about the setup, but it's how you manage a setup. It's how you manage your psychology um, while you're in the trade, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of great things you need to take a look at over here at the, the website. Also, go ahead and sign up for our uh, seven secrets. We're not spammers. We don't spam anybody. Every now and then, if we have a free webinar, we'll send it out to you. Um, and Josh does a phenomenal job. On top of that, all of our videos from the past are there. We have a great start to this week with that wonderful crude trade last week. We did miss the gold trade, unfortunately, but we have a lot of good things. Um, we also have uh, inside the videos, we have some videos of, of past webinars like this one, Leaning on Value Across Multiple Time Frames and the Bonds. Um, we also have dealing with days that don't go your way. Guess what? It's just trading. Things aren't always going to go your way. As you saw, we had to cover the NASDAQ trade pretty quickly last week. Um, it didn't go our way. Big deal. That's trading. Um, you got to learn how to deal with that. These are all great uh, videos and pro and webinars in here. Other than that, guys, that's all I got. I know it's a little bit of longer video today, but again, I, uh, happy new year to everybody around the world, wherever you're watching this from. I wish you guys all nothing but the best, uh, in 2017. I hope your, 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 your accounts grow exponentially and I hope, uh, you can learn something from us. And, uh, and I hope also uh, that uh, all your dreams come true this year too. So anyway, guys, have a great week. If you're not in the Slack channel, get in the Slack channel. We'll be update the charts uh, from, uh, from this actual video. And uh, if we see anything else, we'll usually post it, post it in there. Other than that, guys, have a phenomenal week, and we will talk to you next time.